Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to a new segment that I call Trevor James Transformers Reviews. Um, basically, every week I'm going to be going through my gigantic Transformers collection and basically showing off uh, a different Transformer every single episode. So, uh, I don't know how long this is going to be, but I'm definitely kind of just taking a little bit of a change from my channel for a little bit. So, I'm still going to have the music, still going to have all that kind of stuff like that. But I'm also just trying to widen all the stuff that I have on my channel. So, yeah, Transformers reviews, guys. I hope you enjoy this for anybody that's a big Transformers fan out there. And maybe my channel will get noticed by other people that like Transformers. Um, but, yeah, uh, today I have a very special ep episode for you guys. So, uh, I hope you enjoy. Alright guys, so here we are. This is my new little station for the whole Transformers segment that I'm going to be doing for my channel. So uh, to start off my Transformers reviews, I wanted to review a toy line that was very near and dear to my heart when I was growing up. This is going to get a lot of backlash from a lot of Transformers fans out there who really don't like this series as a whole. But uh, it is the series that I grew up on. I'm a 90s kid. So the Transformers series that I grew up on, of course, is Beast Wars. And I know it's one of the most hated <laughs> toy lines of all the Transformers series. There are people that love it, there are people that hate it. Personally, I absolutely love it. Absolutely love almost all the toys that were released for the line. And um, today I'm going to actually be reviewing two toys from a Japanese-only toy line, which was around the same time that Beast Wars came out, known as Beast Wars Neo. These toys are very hard to get a hold of nowadays. You can get them on eBay, but they're way more expensive than regular toys from the Beast Wars series. And even Beast Wars is expensive to find nowadays if you want them in box or uh, even loose copies are still kind of difficult to find. So uh, today I'm going to be reviewing for you guys two toys known as Sling and Stampy. One being a lizard and one being a rabbit. That's the only time I ever saw Transformers where... One of them is a sh freaking rabbit, which I think is awesome. So yeah, guys, this was very hard for me to get when I was, um, I think I was like 17 when I got this. And uh, I happened to get it from, um, from eBay uh, for a decent price. It was like $35, which for two basic Transformers is very, very expensive. And in Japan, these lines are totally different. They did things... Kind of like America, where they would release certain things together, but unlike America, they had them in like a straight up hard box, and this is what they were released in. So, on the Japanese, or on the, the good side, basically, what's known as Maximals in America was known as the Cybertro Cybertorons in Japan. What was known as the Predacons in America was known as the Desterons in Japan. Um, basically, same kind of thing, you know, you have your animal counterparts. Um, but yeah, guys, today we're going to be reviewing Stampy and Sling. So, I don't really have a lot of Transformers in their packaging. These are some of the only ones I actually have. So, uh, I'm going to take them out in the packaging for you guys today. So, you know, it comes with the standard manual and stuff like that. And then, uh, it comes with Stampy and Sling. And then it comes with a bunch of promotional cards and stuff like that, which I'm not going to take out right now. But let's get Stampy and Sling out of here. <laughs> like so. Alright guys, so here they are. Uh, you have Sling over here, you know, he's just like a nice... Oh, his head's kind of flopping a little bit. That's the only problem with some of these older toys is they are kind of loose when it comes to all their different parts. Um, but he's just like a standard kind of little lizard guy. His mouth can open up a little bit, but for the most part he's very, very small. And of course, like I said, they're basic Transformers. But yeah, this is Sling. You know, he's just like a standard lizard. And uh, very simple looking. It's not the best build, but it's it's interesting. What I really like from this set, though, is Stampy. Um, he just like I've never ever had a, like a rabbit as a Transformer before, and to see this was really cool, and it just caught my eye and made me want the set. So this is Stampy. Uh, his robot form is pretty cool, but if you look really close, there's a lot of detail on this guy. Um, you know, he's got a lot of nice little shadings there. He's got some nice little red eyes, which I find is kind of creepy on a rabbit. Uh, his ears do move, um, and he's just got a lot of little detail on him. Um, coming over to Sling here, Sling's also got a little bit of detail. You know, he's got all the different 
um, patterns on his tail and the part of his body, and then he's also got some uh, detail on his actual spine over here, um, and on his head as well. So there's a lot of detail for these, and that's what I really like about the Beast Wars, is they are very detailed. Some of the older Transformers are not exactly that detailed, but the Beast Wars are. Um, coming to their actual uh, parts, there is a lot of movement in, in Stampy when it comes to his legs. Obviously, you probably wouldn't do this with a rabbit, not to mention when you're moving his arms and legs, he's obviously exposing a lot of robot parts. So I like to keep him in a very simple uh, simple form, kind of like this. And, you know, he just stands on his hind legs and, like, puts his feet forward and stuff like that. Um, his tail can even move a little bit, which is cool. Uh, it also allows his... I don't know if it's actually showing it, but when he's in robot form, he can actually pull the tail to move his arms out. And if you see these parts right here, they kind of push out when you pull the tail. So it, it's a little gimmicky, but, uh... I don't know, I just really like this figure overall. When we come over to Sling here, you know, he's got the same kind of movement when it comes to his legs and stuff. He's got, you know, movements in both of the legs. The uh, The front legs are very stiff. Um, his head can move a very awkward um, way. Because it kind of moves sideways, and you don't really see lizards doing that. Um, the one thing I absolutely hate about Sling, though, is if you look at him, he's got his robot legs kind of poking out on the back of his... Of his tail and then if you obviously flip him over his all his robot parts are exposed and unfortunately that was a flaw for a lot of transformers back then and even now there's still tons of transformers that have their robot parts exposed um but yeah guys uh let's get to the actual robot forms shall we all right guys so here we are uh there's stampy in his robot form and you got sling in his robot form now if you look at sling let's review sling first so sling is one of those times where Putting so much on a robot when it comes to all his extra backpack and robot parts and stuff like that. We're well, not robot parts, but his beast parts. They're all still showing, and they show way too much. You've got his beast head in the front, uh, which kind of just like loops over his body, but unfortunately it just doesn't look very good. There's a lot of beast like heads that actually look decent floating on a body kind of like that but it's just it's just sitting out there way too big if you look from the top it doesn't look too bad but then if you look from the side it's like what the hell's going on he's got like a beer belly um and then when you when he's got his uh his arm on his friggin back legs and tail it's just very weird the the whole mechanism that controls it is just very awkward i know it's supposed to look like it's like a, some kind of weapon but i don't know there's just something i don't like about it and of course, I mean, the back, it hanging off the back like that, that's fine, that doesn't really bother me. But there's just so many parts that are uh, attached to him, it just, it looks very odd. The one thing I really like about him, though, is he his, his special weapon is basically this Venus flytrap thing that comes out of his back. That is really cool, and just like any kind of Venus flytrap, if I click on it, it closes just like a Venus flytrap. So that is definitely a redeeming feature on him. But his whole robot form, I don't know. I, I feel like they could have done so much better of a job. It's not bad. There's so many worse robot forms. Um, but I feel like his, it's just lacking in a lot of ways. Um, and I don't know. It's just, there's something about it that it just doesn't really catch my eye in a good way. But I do like that Venus flytrap action. So we're going to set him down there, and then we're going to grab Stampy. Um, now, Stampy, on the other hand, I really love his robot form. There's, <laughs> there's, there's something about a mecha ro robot bunny is freaking awesome. Um, I like how his ears become basically blades, like side blades for his arms. Uh, he can move them around in all kind of angles, so it just looks really cool the way he's holding it. I know his head becomes part of his arms, and there's a lot of people that don't like that kind of look on a robot, but I think it actually fits him, because it gives him, like, a really cool, like, look to his character. Um, there are a lot of robots that definitely suffer from the whole head, uh, as hands thingy, but he looks really cool with it. Uh, if I get close here, uh, you check out the face sculpt, it's just a really nice scope overall on him. Um, and, uh, you know, he's got the regular, of course, like, the chest plate thingy right there that all of them have. Uh, his back feet are something interesting, though, because the fact that his big, big feet become really big back legs for his actual robot feet, um, <laughs> it's comical, and I actually like the look. I think it looks very interesting, and adds a lot of character to his 
his robot form. And then his two hind legs in the back that kind of poke out almost like spikes. Uh, I like that look too. Um, as far as his uh, movable parts, uh, he's got a lot of flexibility in his legs, in both of his legs. They can go, not a full 80, but they they can go almost all the way. Um, with his arms, the same kind of same kind of way, they can go a full 180 if you wanted to. So there's a lot of poses you can get him in. Uh, his head does not move, though, because the way that it's uh, gimmicked, because it pushes down, unfortunately, it does not move. Um, there we go, get it back up there. Uh, his back hind legs, you can move in any kind of way if you wanted to, too. So if you wanted to get him out of the way, to not give him the hind legs on his back. But I actually happen to like that. I think it gives him a really interesting look to him. And then his gimmick, like I was explaining, in his in his uh, beast form, you kind of pull back on his hind legs and his arms go out like that. And uh, it's just a very interesting gimmick. Now heading over to Sling over here, um, he also has a lot of movability when it comes to his arms. Um... Full 180 on each arm, uh, which is nice, and then his legs have a nice almost 180. But there, there's definitely a lot of both movable parts. You got this over here, you got this over here, so you can do like a whole stand-up leg thing. And a lot of the basic Beast Transformers did have a lot of movability in all their different parts. Um, his head can do a full 180, but it looks very awkward. Um, and once again, he's got that big Hulk and Beast head thing that just... I don't know, it just really takes off from the character. Overall, I really do like this set. I think this set is very cool. However, if you could find Stampy by himself um, for a decent price, I would say pick him up. I would definitely recommend Stampy. Sling has so many parts on him. Overall, he just doesn't look that great of a Transformer. Um, and I know there's a lot of basic Transformers that really don't look that great, and you could totally say because they're basic, they don't have a lot of like, movability with their actual, like, look and, and basically features of their character. But, I don't know, there's something about Sling that I just can't get into. I've never been able to get into him. I could not recommend Sling. But if you could find them both together, um, if you wanted to go for the whole box set, um, I would definitely recommend the box set because it is very cool to have. Unfortunately, it is very expensive. Um, so a lot of people probably could not afford the Japanese prices and the imports. Of course, you have to pay for the imports. But overall, I really do like this character pack. Um, I think both of the characters overall complement each other, but Sling is just lacking in so many ways. I could not recommend him by himself. Well, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this view, um, or this review. Um, there will be a lot more coming on its way, so... I hope you guys uh, like this series. Uh, there will be a lot more. And um, yeah, guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, thumbs up if you like this video. Thumbs down if you don't. Uh, like, comment, or subscribe if you'd like. Um, if you want more music from me, don't worry. That will be coming out soon. Um, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day.